Uh, good evening, everybody. I'm Sylvia, Councillor Sylvia Dunn. I'm chair of this meeting. Uh, before I start the meeting, I do have some housekeeping or introduction to this Zoom meeting. So if you could, and this is our first meeting of community services since lockdown, so if you could be a bit patient, I'll just read this out. So, so thank you to all members of, of the public, councillors and officers who have come online to join today's virtual meeting. Please be aware that the council is recording this meeting and this will be uploaded to our channel. Can I please just ask that you all ensure that you are muted at this point in time. We will then prompt speakers to unmute themselves one at a time. This is to ensure that we can hear speakers clearly with minimal background noise. As chair, I will be leading today's meeting. The host, who is the council officer, in this case, Georgia, will be providing the technical support and logistics to help the flow of the meeting. If you have any technical problems during the meeting, please use the chat function to flag this with the host. I would like to take a few minutes to ensure all participants are set up accordingly. The host will now run through the names of the participants and check that your audio and video is working. So please bear with us while this is done. I'm going to hand it over to you, Georgia, for that. Yeah, lovely. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, yeah, so I'll just go through the screen as I can see people. And if you could just unmute yourself and just give us a wave and say hello, that'd be great. Thank you. Um, so I know us officers and Chair are fine. So Councillor Brown? Yes, hello. Okay, thank you. Councillor Walraven? Good evening. Hi, thank you. Councillor Cash? Hello. Hi. Councillor Meek? Hello, good evening. And Councillor Everton. Hello. Councillor Edson. Hello, good evening. Hi. And um, so we've got four members of public with us, so I'll just run through and check you're all happy as well. And um, so we've got Penny Lower there. Lovely. And off the wagon, Rob Cowan. <laughs> Hi. Okay, um, off mute. Hello. Wonderful, thank you. Christine Brett. Good evening. Hi, and Jean. Wonderful, lovely. Thank you, that's all okay, Chair. Okay, to carry on. Anyone wishing to speak in public participation will be given the opportunity to do so. When prompted, if you are using video feeds, video feed, sorry, please raise your hand to show you wish to speak. If you have only joined with audio, please ensure you are unmuted and identify yourself that you are wishing to speak. I, as chair, will then prompt when it is your turn to speak. You will be given a maximum of four minutes to make your representation. Please state the agenda item which you are speaking about. Through me as chair, council members or officers may then respond to your point if necessary. You will not automatically be able to reply unless I as chair allow you to do so. I would then ask that participants looking to leave the meeting wait until the end of an agenda item to limit distraction for other participants. Anyone looking to rejoin partway through the meeting will join the Zoom waiting room and then be let into the meeting by the host at the next available point of the meeting. I trust that all councillors have read the taking part in the Zoom meeting instructions. I would like to summarise some key points. As chair, I will leave the meeting through the agenda as normal. Councillors must still give apologies or make, or make declarations of interest in the usual manner. Councillors wishing to speak should indicate this in the chat box and if they have video feed also raise their, raise their hands in the video feed so the order can be noted. When, when voting, the host will call out names in order and councillors should respond with their vote. Please note that votes will not be recorded, will not be a recorded vote unless requested by a councillor in the usual manner. So all present, please remember to show respect to others in the meeting and avoid interrupting where possible to enable others to follow the meeting. If any councillor feels concerned about any aspect of the meeting or discussion, please unmute yourself and clearly state point of order. The chair will then gesture for you to elaborate. Please do remember to check regularly that you are muted on your screen, as this will help hugely with the running of the meeting. Anyone present felt to be behaving unacceptably will be ejected from the meeting by the chair. Just a reminder to all that holding virtual meetings is a new approach for the council. 
and therefore we need to, we'll, we will need to show patience and flexibility while we all get to grips, grips with this meeting format. Okay, all right, thank you for your patience. I will now open and start the meeting. Uh, agenda item number one is apologies for absent and declarations of substitute members, please, Georgia. Yep, so we've got apologies, Chair, from Councillors Ali and Rafnuma Haider, and we've got Councillor Mark Brown substituting for one. Lovely, second. thank you very much. Could I, Chair, could I just jump in? Also, I had um, an apology from Councillor Borman, I just had a call saying he's unable to make it a bit earlier. Okay, thank you, Tony. Right, agenda item number two de disclosure of interest. To deal with any disclosure, by members of any disclosable pecuniary interest and interest other than pecuniary interest as defined under the Seaford Town Council Code of Conduct and the Localism Act to 2011 in relation to matters on the agenda. No, right, thank you. Moving on. Agenda item three is public participation. Does any member of the public wish to speak? Yes, please. Okay. We've got Christine, okay. So, George, have you noted that? So, and Penny. Thank you. I'll take Penny. Penny Lower, please. Thank you. Good evening. Evening. Am I starting? Sorry. Yes, please. Yes. Oh, and, um, yeah, and you'd like to speak as well. That's fine. Thank you. Yes. Please. Yeah. Sorry. I, I just I, di I didn't know whether you meant speak right now or yes. I would like to s contribute if I could later during item ten. No, I'm sorry. You have to. You sorry to uh, George. Do you want to explain or shall I explain? Because you have to be only at, at this item, you have to speak now on any item on the agenda, but at this point of public participation, you can't speak further down into the meeting, no. Okay, I understand. So you'll be speaking? I will speak if I can. That's fine, thank you. Okay, so thank you again. Thank you, back to you Penny, if, if I could let... Okay, thanks very much. Um, uh, it's really uh, matters arising from the facility manager's report and, and things that may or may not be included in that and some general comments about community issues. Um, I'd like to thank um, Tony for his report and note that many of the important developments are on hold obviously for no fault of his own but it must be very frustrating that all of these things are on hold. Um, I'd like to ask for comments and information if available on various facilities, environmental and health and safety concerns. I recognise that um, Seaford Town Council may not have control or even the remit for some of these things that I'm going to mention, um, but that I'm particularly concerned about a few issues that affect residents and visitors using the seafront at the moment. Obviously it's quite busy, um, I understand it's been noted as a, um, a beach of worth for people to come to. Um, so is there any First of all, is there any update on lifeguard provision? I was actually on the beach myself this afternoon, uh, which was wonderful, and, and actually had to, uh, witnessed two children being rescued um, from going in the sea. And the issue seems to me, and I've noted it before, is that families sit way back on the beach. I was outside near Frankie's, where there's like a four-tier beach at the moment, and a lot of families sit on the back or the first tier down and their children are in the sea 25, 30 yards away at low tide. And a mother had to run right the way down the beach with her children screaming and going under the waves. So, you know, this is just something I want to raise. Um, and also a number of dogs loose on the beach. And that again, I've, I've noted that on several occasions. That, so that that uh, is not being complied with. Um, Possibly, a, a, if possible, a, um, an update on litter collection. I know that's been an issue down there on busy days. Um, I wonder, I'm sorry, this is a whole list. I wonder if there's any um, any advance on introducing this 25 mile an hour limit along the seafront. It seems ludicrous to me that places like Lewis and Brighton can have a blanket 20 mile an hour um, limits and yet our busy seafront with cars going in and out, children crossing the road, etc, etc, and we haven't got a 20 mile an hour limit. Uh, public feedback on concessions, if there's any, we've got lots of new concessionaires, they're open and doing business, I just wonder how that's going. And then finally, sorry, uh, I wonder if there's any updates on boot fares, I understand that the Rotary Club are now having one, um, and I wonder 
you know, how that's been organised um, and whether there'll be more. And could we please have an update on the open air cinema in Martello Fields, which I understand is now not taking place. I'd like to know a bit more about that. So sorry, very sorry for a long list, but that's my concerns. Thank you, Penny. Uh, Tony, can you, do you want to raise any of this or do you, will you be covering it in your report? I mean, is there anything you specifically want to raise now? Um, I'll, I'll just go through the points one by one, mainly. Um, Thank you. So the, so the lifeguards, um, they have been advised by their governing body not to do patrols. Um, that, that was right at the beginning of lockdown and as we're being eased out of it, that has not changed and they will not be uh, um, patrolling the beach for this summer. We, we have put communications out about that and we put loads and loads of posters out on the seafront saying that. Um, so, so that's where we are with it. They are a voluntary organisation. We don't pay them. They do, you know, they do it all off their own backs. So, so this year, no lifeguards. Um, the dogs is a, is an ongoing issue. Um, we may, we may have to look at some more signage. I know LDC really, they're the only ones that can enforce any fixed sign, uh, fines on people or anything. And, uh, I'm hoping they'll get some more signage up. The, the new signage we've got down the seafront does clearly show what areas dogs can go on, but it's still, it hasn't got the message across as well as I would have liked it to have done. Um, litter collection, um, things seem to have settled down a bit now with the litter, but it's still an issue as it is every year. Um, with um, plastic free seafood, we, uh, we ran a competition for um, school children to design uh, tape litter home posters, various posters. Um, we had about 36 entries, it was really popular. Um, so the winners have been chosen and the signs are being printed now. Some of them are already up on the new seafront signage, but a lot of the other ones are gonna go actually on the bins themselves. Um, so hopefully that will help improve things. I don't. I know some people say more bins is the uh, is the answer, but it but it really isn't. People have just got to learn to take their rubbish home with them. Um, the twenty five mile an hour limit. That's the first I've heard of that, but it does seem, you know, like it should be. I don't know whether there's been any um, anybody's done a piece of work on that at all. I don't know, but it's certainly something that I'd, I'd be happy to, you know, look at and uh, and uh, support. Um, concession feedback's been really good. Um, they've all been excellent with their uh, with their restrictions for COVID and uh, the measures they've been put in place. Um, the new concession down at Martello has been very popular. Dom Frankie's is as popular as ever. Um, the uh, we've got a new concession started just this week a fresh fish concession down at Bonningstead, which uh, I haven't had any feedback on yet, but hopefully should be good. Um, so yeah, so far all, all, all positive about the, the concessions. Um, boot fair, yeah, we were approached by um the Rotary Club to do a boot fair in August. Um, it was we. We, we asked him to come up with a really good, robust risk assessment for it, which um, Bob, our health and safety officer, helped them with. Um, we're happy with it now. We feel they've put all the, the right measures in place. So we're going to allow them to do a boot fair on the 9th of August in the, um, in the Westfield. Um, we're going to monitor it, see how it goes. If it's, if it's a success and people are doing what they should be doing, then um, we'll allow them to do some more boot fairs going through the year. Um, open air cinema. Um, yes, it all looked like it. I, I think I bought this up elsewhere, but it did all like, look like it was going to go um, forward. But the, um, the people running it wanted to have a license to sell alcohol at the uh, event. Um, as a town council, we didn't feel we could endorse that. Uh, neither did the police and neither did 
Lewis District Council because we found out afterwards that they didn't actually grant them a license. So because of that, they felt the organisers that they couldn't make they couldn't make their money back without selling alcohol, um, which is a little bit disappointing, really. But 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 that's it. Um, I think a lot of it was because it, it was done a little bit last minute, maybe with a bit more organisation, a, a bit more time to advertise it. Um, it could have gone ahead, but as it is at the moment, um, we're not having it this year. I think thank that's you. it, Chair. Yeah. Yep, lovely. Thank you. I have noticed before I move on to the public again, um, I've noticed that Councillor Edson's hand has been up. Have you got something to add to um, explain something to Penny or you're muted, John? Oh, that's better. Yep. Um, uh, yes, I did write to um, East Sussex uh, Highways about the issue of the 20 mile an hour and uh, I received um, a letter back and it and they say the issues you have raised will be assessed by an experienced officer who will examine your suggestions against clear criteria, etc. etc. There, so the rest of it goes on, but basically, yeah, we're looking at it and we'll see where we go with that. But that's that's how we stand at the moment. Okay, thank you, Councillor Edison. Thank you. Uh, okay, move. oh, Councillor Cash, have you got something to add? Yes, I was just uh, saying to, I was just thinking, Tony, uh, the Rotary were, I know, have, have got a number limit, haven't they, for their boot fare. Um, and they were concerned, I think, that the fencing round there should, we should make sure it was all proper by the time of the event because there's some broken areas and they were fearful that even if they were monitoring the numbers at the gates that some people would be able to climb well they'd be able to climb over anyway but broken areas would be make it more vulnerable to secure the site i wonder if it's possible for someone to have a look at that please yeah yeah of course and just to say that i agree totally with what john said and hopefully that would be something we can move forward on together i think the speed limit along the seafront is an essential thing that we ought to look at um and i am concerned about the issues that penny raised about the safety of children on seaford beach it deeply concerns me i have seen when i've walked along seaford beach and I'm a long-term resident here and I've known from childhood how dangerous our currents of Seaford Beach can be and visitors don't realise that and to see young people, young youngsters on inflatables going out at some distance in the sea is very concerning and I, I worry about that, that we won't do anything about it until we have a, a mortality and that's, a, that's not how we should be viewing this. I think we need to really look at this issue and see if there's anything we can cover come up with that looks at that her, the safety concern that Penny raised. I don't know if anyone's got any ideas whether um, anyone we could run a temporary warden system that just warned people of it and people people just don't read notices they best when the world we'd wish they did it covers us I think legally if we put notices up but I'm not sure how I feel, how comfortable I feel about us saying that we have done all we can to make sure that no child drowns off Seaford Beach at the moment. Okay, right, thank if, you. Cash I, um, I could just add to that, uh, Chair, if that's okay. I mean, if it's yeah. something that maybe the councillors want to coordinate themselves, um, ordering the seafront, you know, as, as officers, we just wouldn't have the resources to do that. But if it's something that the councillors would like to yeah. coordinate, then it could be a good idea. Councillor Cash, can I come back to you? Can I move on to the members of the public that wish to speak this evening and come back to you? I was bed? just going to make a comment on what Tony had said then. Which is? It, it, that, so that would be okay. You would be quite happy for a group of councillors to try and coordinate a volunteer group, Tony? Absolutely, and and we'd work with you. You know, we we we'd get a risk assessment done for you with Bob. So yes, yeah, absolutely. I, I think Thank it's a good you. idea. Thank All you. Right, sorry, sorry, sorry Captain. Captain. That's okay. No problem. Okay, the the next member of the public had the hand raised was was uh, Councillor Christine Brett. Good evening. Right. Good evening, um, Madam. Oh no, can't hear you. Sorry. Sorry. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, I want to say I just think what Councillor Cash has suggested is a really good idea to have some beach wardens and people monitoring the situation. Mm -hmm. 
as a child, I was never allowed to swim from Seaford ever at all, never. Anyway, that isn't why I wanted to speak tonight. I have two things that I want to raise tonight. One of them is your item uh, number eight, which is the repairs to Splash Point. I've received a number of letters from residents about Splash Point, and I'm really, really pleased to see that you are hoping to be able to uh, make the contribution with LDC to do the repairs this year, because it is going to get worse. If we do have a really, really bad <coughs> fall, it's likely that the cost would become even more expensive. So I do hope the councillors are going to vote that through tonight. And then Tony will not be surprised to hear that I want to speak about um, item nine as well, the water refill points. I would be absolutely delighted if we do finally get those sorted out this year. Because apart from anything else, if people can refill their own bottles, they're not going to litter them. They're going to you know, use the water refill points. And then they won't be putting so much stuff in the bins, which are always overflowing. It's incredibly busy down there again today. And also all the way around to Tide Mills, we've got the same problem. We had the last one that was hot and it'll probably be the same tomorrow. So I do hope that you'll be able to vote those through tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Christine Brett. And moving on now to uh, our third uh, member of the public, which is off the wagon, Rob Cowig. Hello, can you hear me okay? Yes, yeah. thank you. Yeah, hello. Um, yeah, my, my uh, I just wanted to speak because I'm obviously new to the process, not just Zoom, but council meetings. Mm -hmm. And obviously I, my interest in the meeting tonight is item 10, which is the liquor uh, sales on, uh, on the seafront. Um, mm -hmm. I've submitted a, a kind of a very uh, brief report to one of your colleagues, Ellie, a few weeks ago. And I just wanted to confirm that that had been uh, viewed and people had had sight of that. Um, or is that not something that is going to be in any way relevant to the meeting? Or I, I'm just a little bit vague as to what the actual meeting content will be relating to my involvement. Okay, thank you. Now, I must say I've not received... Has any other councillor... Yes, it's, it's on the exempt report, is it not? Oh, is it? Oh, I, I'm sorry, I haven't had a chance to go there this evening. Yes. Oh, right, okay. Could, so, I, saw, I saw that. What, could you explain what that means, the exempt? Um, <laughs> I'm happy to explain yes, that. Yes, please, please tell um, me. It's just... Um, so, your report, uh, Rob, has... Um, the, the exact one that you've sent through, we've um, we put as an appendix to um, item 10. Okay. And being exempt, it's not um, available to the public. It's just available to councillors and officers. Fine. Okay. okay. All right. Okay, thank you. So that ends public participation. Does any, apart from Tony, um, does any other councillor want to contribute? I'd rather not discuss this in detail because it is an item on the agenda. But before we move on, you know, everyone seems happy. Okay, thank you. Thank you to all members of the public for your questions. Uh, moving on now to um, agenda item four, we have the projects and facilities manager, facilities managers updated re update report. And we are to consider report 26 to 20, updating members of the Community Services Committee on progress and actions relating to Seaford Town Council assets, services and projects. This is page seven to 11. Um, before I hand over to the committee, Tony, would you like to say anything specifically on this? I mean, it is pretty self-explanatory. I don't know if there's anything you want to particularly highlight. Um, and then I'll go over to the committee to ask questions. Okay. Th thank you, Chair. J just, just a couple of bits. Um, yeah. um, one is um, obviously loads of things on hold at the moment. That's, that's just the, the way it is. But a few things we have moved forward on. Um, we have the new tender, uh, the new um, trader in the Salts Cafe, which we've yeah. just had nothing but positive feedback on. It, it's been absolutely great. Um, one project we did complete with the seafront signage replacement after years and years of trying to work out and agree what was going to be the final design. We got there in the end and um, I think they look really good. Um, one item we are actually putting in some much needed uh, finance on is filming and photography. 
um, NER location manager and also uh, Sharon's maternity cover has done a fantastic job of, of building up relationships with uh, with filming companies and, and photographic companies and, and a lot of a lot of the work comes into us through word of mouth because um, Eddie has made us such a, 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 a great organization to work with so um, she's done really well there so we've already I think we've already bought in over 20,000 and we have I can't go into too much detail but we've got a, a well-known BBC show a Christmas special hopefully filming in September down at the Coast Guard cottages and we've also got a, a very high-end fashion brand shoot that's gonna happen um, which um, again can't do too much detail because it's just at the uh, sort of uh, a negotiating stage at the moment but but it's, it's really good she, she's done a great job there um, and just I just wanted to touch on the events as well obviously we haven't done any um, uh, outdoor events we haven't been able to but the, the team have done a great job um, all the officers on uh, working on virtual events and particularly the Armed Forces Day which which we got a lot of really good feedback on and uh, especially from some of the um, committee members who, who saw that not many other councils were doing this sort of thing and, and you know we, we've done something you know pretty good with what what we've got but well not pretty good very good um and that's about it thank you okay thank you tony well i'd like now to hand it over to the committee yes councillor cash i just want to say uh tony could you express our our thanks to ellie for the hard work she's put in it's much appreciated it's a difficult time for us and any money coming in is very important so thank her um, on our behalf for all that she's done for us lovely thank you councillor cash councillor brown yes i saw your hand up and john councillor edson afterwards for councillor brown uh, yes i'd just like to ask tony if there's any <coughs> any further um, beach hut sales in in the offing at the moment money i want your money <laughs> <laughs> Well, I did suggest to the team that we all club together and um, buy one to help the council out, but um, <laughs> I've not had any takers yet. Um, mm. we, we, we've had a lot of interest and it's frustrating. We've had so much more interest this year than the previous year, but it hasn't turned itself into sales yet. We, we had the one sale earlier in the year. Um, we had a couple down from London who we thought were absolutely 99 percent sure they were going to buy one then 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 change their minds um so i'm still hopeful but but no more sales at the moment mark i'm afraid okay. thank you councillor councillor edson you had your hand up yeah yeah um i just i just want to ask tony uh a few months back a constituents uh, wrote to us with regard to the ice cream van that uh, is down by edinburgh road um, and couldn't we get an electric one? Um, have we moved on that at all um, to try and put electricity in? Or um, is that is that van a different van to what used to be there? Okay. Um, well, f firstly, yes, it is a different van um, and a much newer and a much uh, a much quieter and, mm. and efficient van. Um, and with regards to the electricity, we have got we have got the infrastructure there to do it, but because the projects have been put on hold, uh, you know I haven't been able to get it connected up yet. But um, you know it, it's going to cost us a fair few thousand pounds to get it all connected up. But 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 we have got that we've got the kiosk there that it's ready to tee out of. So as soon as we get the go ahead, we can we can crack on with it. Thank you, Tony. Councillor Woolraven. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm just wondering with the new concession huts, like with the the, the, the crate man, are they going to be painted? These new huts because they look quite out of place, you know, uh, to the you know the ones which are painted. Um, there's only one of ours that's not painted. Yeah. And that's the um, crepe de la creme. That's it. Um, 
I believe he was going to put some signage up and things to make it look nicer. I, I will have a chat with him about that. I mean, we don't insist on him painting it, but I, but I get what, you know, I get where you're coming from. Yeah, yeah. Um, with regard, I think, to the other hut um, up near the sailing club, that's nothing to do with us. So we can't really, um, uh, you know, ask them to paint. I mean, I, I can have a chat with them, but it's down to them. Yeah, yeah. Is that part of the um, the railway land there, where that hut is by the sailing club? Well, I, I, I thought it all belonged to the sailing club, that, that mm, land. So did I. I. I don't think it's with the with the railway. I mean, I, I could be wrong. Or port uh, authorities, should I say? No, it's yes. not. I, no, I think the port authorities are, are a bit further up. Mm -hmm. I think that actual bit is, is belongs to the um, the sailing club. Right, okay. Okay, okay. because it just sort of, you know, sits there and it sticks out quite a lot. I, I know what you're saying. Yeah, I, I I agree with you. Some people don't like the brightly coloured ones, though. So uh, <laughs> these ones look out of place now. Yeah, you're oh. you're, you're quite right. Thank, Thank you, you Castor Raven. Anybody else? Because I'd like to ask Tony. If, mm, no. Tony, I'd like to ask you um, regarding one point three, where it says you've um, we've managed we've sold one hut, but we've actually hired out some of the the huts at Bonnestead. Um, can I just ask, is that a yearly rental, monthly, weekly, the, the, the ones you've hired out? It's a, it's a yearly rental. Oh, it's but, a yearly rental. But right. The reason we went for that was, um, obviously it's a quiet area up there. there yes. There's a sort of, eld, more, more of an elderly clientele, if you like, having the huts there. So we, yes. didn't, we didn't want to create an environment where there were just families coming for the day with, you know, kids and buckets and no. whatever you know so it wasn't we didn't feel that was quite the right environment for it yes we couldn't do short-term rental either we decided because it would just be too much uh, resources to clean deep clean the huts in between you know people coming each in person and going yeah. out so, so yeah no, okay right that makes sense um i'll just see something else on my list uh Oh, and um, the, if anyone hasn't seen the sorts photos on Facebook, it has been done up like an American diner and it is pretty, quite a wow factor. So it might be even just worth having a look because it's been done out in, uh, I think, black, red and white. And it's pretty, pretty spectacular. It, certainly someone commented to me in Eastbourne, oh, who used to live here. Oh, my days, I looked at pictures of the sorts and couldn't believe it was the same cafe. So it's, that's how much it's changed if you wanted to have a look. Um, to go down there. Um, hi, Tony. Uh, one, oh, sorry, no, we were well, one point twelve with the concessions. High and over. Has anybody gone in there yet? Because you did mention in, in the report that you might have somebody go there. Are we still struggling to put anyone in high and over? Um, no, we've got somebody there. We, we've had oh, uh, right. a trader there for about three weeks now, three, four oh. weeks. So the oh, that's young good. lady there running it, and it's it's. It's, Things uh, be going really well for her. I mean, you, you're never going to get the footfall that you get at Southfield Barn or on the seafront, but there seems to be enough there for it. So it's and it's a really nice looking trailer. It really sort of blends in well with its uh, with the environment. So so far so good. Okay, thank you. And finally, one. Now this is really for the committee. Okay, it's not actually a question. It's more of a statement, and it really comes off for the fact that Councillor Meek. Uh, wrote us all an email, I'd say about four to five weeks ago, um, in relation to the, the the way that the litter and all the other issues that we have, that residents write to us, and, and, and Tony's listed them here. We've got the increased litter, we've got fires, human waste, illegal camping, I mean, you name it, the list is long. And I know it's been a bit OTT because of lockdown, but it's always been an issue with our seafront because we've got free parking, we've got an amazing long beautiful accessible seafront for all we do have problems and i have seen it year in year out the 10 years i've lived here so um i'd like to put this to the committee we won't make a decision tonight because we i will need to speak to the officers uh, georgia and, and tony um on the way forward 
Um, Mark, Councillor, Councillor Brown, he said he felt that it would be good to go with my, my suggestion. I'd like to get, instead of a working group, I'd like to set up, if it's possible, with possibly volunteers from the community that have got background, I'd like to set up a subcommittee of community services that just deals with the issues that we find raised on our seafront, litter, fires, barbecues, the lack of lifeguards and anything else. I would like the committee to think about this, um, whether you think it's, whether it'd be better as a working group. The reason I didn't want a working group is because we wouldn't have any authority. Uh, a subcommittee, we might have some authority to put stuff in place with recommendations for full council. We wouldn't meet regularly because we wouldn't need to. Um, but it was really on the back of uh, starting with Councillor Meek's email. Um, I mean, I don't know if anybody wants to comment at the moment um, or whether you'd like to go away and think about it and uh, write to this committee, to me as chair, with your your ideas, your, you think it's a good idea, is it a waste of time? Um, and I, if, if we did have this subcommittee, I would like to consider, as I said, bringing on volunteers from the community that could possibly have backgrounds in waste management, litter, fresh ideas to bring to the table. So, because that was for that was the COVID nineteen update one point thirteen. So, uh, can I leave that with the committee? Thank you. No, no question. Well, <laughs> silence. <laughs> All right. So, anybody? Uh, any uh, other? Sorry, sorry. Sorry, Tony? Sylvia. Yeah. I, I will just add something to that. We. We sort of have got a bit of a, um, and this this could really sort of feed in well too. But we have got a, a group together with uh, Neil Richardson from Splashpoint Music and um, a couple of uh, a couple of people from the local angling uh, community. Um, together, we're we're looking to put some uh, uh, fishing tackle recycling bins yep. along the seafront. And it's all come about because we, we're just trying to get a bit of a conversation between swimmers and anglers. Yeah. There's been a bit of friction there in the uh, in the past. So um, I think it's a really good idea. And if you if you did um, take it forward, like to take it forward, I would certainly recommend those two people getting involved in it. Oh, absolutely. And I think, yeah. I, and I think they'd be happy to. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Sonia. I've been, yeah, that's very good. I know. I don't know the angling guy, but I do know Neil very well. So that's good. Yes, thank you. Um, is there any other questions from the committee for Tony's report? C Councillor Cash. For your idea to go forward, uh, Councillor Dunn, would it be necessary for that to go to full council? What, for approval? For uh, approval uh, of a, a, a new working group or subcommittee? I don't know. I'd have to, Georgia, I don't know if you can, I mean, oh. I'll speak to Georgia um, outside of this meeting to get the lowdown on how do we go about this and then obviously we'd keep the committee updated as well. Yeah I mean just to say Chair that um, the committee does have the power to create working groups and subcommittees of this committee so yeah the committee could do that at its next meeting if it wanted. I mean it, okay. it might be a good idea if councillors are sending kind of their thoughts and comments over to you Chair that you look yes. at formulating almost like draft terms of reference for that subcommittee yes. and yep. then we can I present that as a proper report at the next meeting of this committee. Yeah, which I can send over to you and Tony to have a look through and advise yeah. accordingly. That's yeah. brilliant. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else? Oh, Councillor Brown? Uh, yes, thank you Chair. Um, I think also it might be a good idea if we could get Lewis District Council involved in that too because they're responsible for collecting the litter. Yes, so yes. Clearing up a little bit so you know it would seem it would seem reasonable to try and get one of our local councillors who are yep. involved in that, in that meeting. Yes that's, for, that's a very good I mean Councillor Brett comes regularly but I don't know how comfortable she feels about with the background but she when she visits us our seafront like anybody else so that is that is, would have been one of my considerations to have one of our uh, district councillors on on the committee absolutely thank you councillor brown <laughs> thumbs up <laughs> thank you right um anybody else before we move on to the next no everyone's happy right so moving on Right, we've got uh, agenda item five. 
Um, this is to inform members of the Community Services Committee of Income and Expenditure up to the 30th of June 2020. You are recommended to note the contents of the report. I will hand over to Tony to give any background and then over to the committee to ask questions. I've got two hands up already. Tony, do you need to say something? Um, no. Not really, no. No, I think it's no, pretty no, self-explanatory. Right, okay, I'll hand over to Councillor Brown. Could I ask you to um, go back to item four and, and uh, ask the committee to... Uh, oh, sorry. Oh, my days. <laughs> oh, sorry. Too impatient. Sorry, thank you, the Councillor Brown. Yes, yeah, sorry, committee. Go back to agenda item four. Can we just have your hands to show you note the contents of, of the report, please? Thank you. I do apologise for that. Thank you, Councillor Brown. Um, now we can go back to five. Councillor Walraven, did you have any? Did you have the same as Mark, uh, Councillor Brown, or are you something completely separate? <laughs> You're muted. Yes, I was uh, going to point out just to note that previous report. Yeah. Oh. All right. Thank okay. You. Thank you. So, yeah. So, agenda item five is the. Um, uh, community services, income and expenditure. Any questions? No, no. So we have got, again, you are recommended to note the contents of the report. Please can I have a show of hands in favour. That's great. Thank you. Okay. All right. Agenda item six. We are to present different options for Christmas magic 2020 to support government's COVID-19 guidance and restrictions to the town council budget. The recommendations are number one, note the contents of the report and number two, to consider the options presented and instruct the projects and facilities team accordingly. Now, in this instance, I will be handing over to Sharon because Sharon is our officer that deals quite um, it's very involved in Christmas magic. So Sharon, please could I hand over to you to give an overview? Sure, yeah. So we've got the three options. Um, we've got the first option, which is we carry on as we have done each year, which would be maybe a bit more difficult for us to manage that um, with the COVID-19 restrictions. Um, because it wouldn't just be a Christmas market, it would be a gathering in open space that would be very hard for us to manage um, how people are coming and going in that area because we would have entertainment along with market stalls, um, the lantern making for the children in an enclosed space. So um, that would take up a lot more um, time with us organising how we would go forward with um, keeping up with COVID-19 regulations. We have looked at option B on the report, um, which is a restricted Christmas magic. So that would be market stores. Looking at not having market stores how we've had them before and doing that more on the basis of people bringing their own um, gazebo and paper area and we could space them um, a lot better down the high street and Broad street for people to manoeuvre around the wrong way system um, that we left on the right hand side of the local street centre at the moment of um, when you're going around the yeah, areas what you want to see and do. Yes, Councillor Cash? Sorry, I'm just saying you're breaking up, Sharon, and we can't hear what you're saying, which is a shame. Yeah, I've, I've, have we all had a bit of difficulty hearing Sharon's? Um, Feed. Yes. Any any other councillor had problems listening? Georgia, did you have problems as well? I could hear her fine, actually. Oh, how strange! <laughs> yeah. I, it was a little bit breaking up with me. So. No, it was quite quite bad this for us. So, could you repeat some of the last bits of what you were saying? Yeah. Can you hear me better now? Yes. Okay. Um, so, which bit do you want me to start from? Because you were saying about option one, you didn't think was, was viable because obviously the, the, the content of it. Can you move on from there? Sorry. Yeah, so, so option two, we were looking at more of a um, street market with maybe a bit more of a left and right kind of flow or up and down flow of our 
Broad Street and our High Street. So just like they have in the local kind of shopping centres at the moment, um, and more of a market where people would bring their own setup. So like the boot sales in a way, you would have your spacing and they would have their own gazebo in their stall. Um, there wouldn't be the big entertainment stage for people to gather would look at maybe not having a big light switch on this year and maybe we could do something either a separate day or just that they would come on on that day as if all the shoppers are, are are there in the street for the traders and the people that are attending the market um or the other option would be to not have christmas magic at all but i don't know how the community would feel about that um after being such a long year and us, you know, not really having anything to do um, and give back to the community. Yes, Councillor Everton. So, yeah. Yes, yeah, sorry, Councillor Cash. Sorry. <laughs> You're muted. <laughs> I think Councillor Woolwave wants to speak first. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, sorry, I was paying attention to Sharon. I didn't see. Sorry, Councillor Woolwave, and yes. Um, yeah, I mean, um, I would. I'd say like um, option two, um, but if we had, um, will they be um, judging the shop windows? We could still work with the chambers and do something like that. Because and we could still look at the secret stones competition for the children to have an activity, which maybe ranges not just on that day so that people could go in out of town, uh, maybe when it wasn't as busy for them. Mm. I mean, I was just wondering if we go back to like um, probably do the switch on on the Friday night um, after the judging of the um, the shop window. window. Yeah. If that would work just for this year. Yeah. So we could do the tree and the lights in one evening, and then do the maybe the Christmas market on the next day. Yeah. 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 Okay, something to think. So it, it, um, I mean, because the the judging is quite quite a good event in itself and maybe you know if we um, sort of have the switch on and probably the blessing of the Christmas tree mm. or the Chris you know the, um, on the Friday night maybe maybe a thought okay thank you thank yeah. you all Raven yeah, right, I've got Councillor Cash Councillor Edson and Councillor um, Everton so does anybody know who was first was Councillor Edson first no, yeah, Councillor Edson and then Cash and then Everton. Yeah, I, th I think that, that that option B, um, you know, we still get the people there, I think, you know, in smaller numbers, but judging from what I've heard tonight, I think we can, um, we can cobble together something that will, um, you know, would do for this year, uh, and and at the same time hoping that this uh, this virus starts abating um, during the cold weather. I don't know. I mean, the scientists are telling us all kinds of things. You know, it's it's good in the cold and so and so. Normally, flu does get beaten in cold weather. Who knows? We may be lucky, but I think that's a pretty good um, uh, way of doing it under the circumstances. Mm. Okay, thank you, Luke. thank you, Luke. Thank you, Councillor Edson. Councillor Cash and then yourself, Councillor Everton, I'll come to you after. Councillor Cash. I think the situation this year gives us an opportunity to rethink what we want for Seaford. I mean, I've seen it before and we get quite a lot of people coming in from out of town with things like plastic lightsabers and uh, things like that. We, we want to cut down on the plastic kind of waste like that coming into the town and we want it for our traders to make their Christmas better for the town and we've got to revitalise the centre of our town and by giving local traders an opportunity to think how they could use the new facility, perhaps of coming out onto the pavements themselves, doing their own displays, thinking about how their window displays can draw people in and perhaps have little competitions as we used to have on small scales and looks more like, if you like, the, the French or German village markets that they have, which are very much centred on what the 
community can, prov can provide on its high street rather than pulling people in from outside to provide stalls and things. So it's a community event which um, gives a kind of intimacy at Christmas, which is one of the loveliest things about Christmas. And I think we could build that because it needs to be simpler. And in being simpler, it can be just as beautiful. Okay, thank you to Councillor Cash. Councillor Everton. Yeah, uh, I, I think we have to do something. We shouldn't just, just cancel the whole thing. I think it's lovely mm. and it's, it's not been a great year. I think it's nice for people to have that sense of normality towards the end of the year. The only thing is that, you know, I wouldn't, I'm not great at sort of organising these kinds of events, but um, I was in conversation with someone who works with someone in public health um, and they are preparing for an October second wave and a bit of a peak there. So, and it's possible that there'll be restrictions again on numbers of people that can move around things. So anything that we come up with kind of has to be, um, if we could factor in that there might be a dynamic change in, you know, you can plan it now, but in October, there may be a kind of dynamic change in what we can and can't do. So anything we come up to do be sort of adaptable to a possible not not lockdown but a tightening up of some of the that some of the uh, movement street movement things like that so just to keep that in mind because it is they are predicting october to be uh, another another wave, wave. Okay. what to be yeah. by then. thank you councillor evident councillor uh time to go councillor brown uh, yes, I'm very much in favour of option two. Um, I think yeah. that that's a, a very good um, resolution to a, quite a difficult problem. Uh, I'd like to ask Sharon, what, what sort of income do you expect to get from the stalls? Last year we made about 1,300 from the stalls, right. um, but we have our own marquees for some of those stalls, so we would pay um, Adam's event company to erect that so I've asked him not to put those up and um, for individuals to bring their own stalls to help us save them, um, costs there and obviously the stage would save us some cost as well so hopefully if those people wanted to come back and trade and have their gazebos because a lot of them are from the local area so Seaford, New Haven, Peacehaven that they work from home so they might not have a shop unit but they they do have a business in the local area still um, so really we could look at recouping the those sales rather than paying for the erection of our marquees have you any idea what you would charge we would probably still charge the same as what we did last year which was about 40 pounds a stall um and we'd have to look at how much we would charge for the electric because we'd need to cover costs on hiring a generator okay thank you okay do you mind if i yeah, no, yes, sorry, Tony. Yes, please do. To that, I mean, just just to go to um, Councillor Brown, we we normally have a budget of, of three thousand for uh, Christmas magic, and it's basically we it's a, it's the difference between what we spend and what we we take. So I think we have a ten thousand spend and a seven thousand income. What, what we're saying with option two is, is that we do expect to spend um, of up to a thousand pounds. That's that's the sort of limit we set ourselves, but we will be trying to get it cost neutral this year, whether it's through sponsorship, to, through the stalls, through reduced amount that we pay Sussex events. So, you know, we're not looking to do a big spend on it this year. I do understand that, you know, and, um, and I can see the logic behind it. and. Uh... You know, I know we we already have a budget for the Christmas um, market anyway. Um, hopefully, we can reduce the cost of that with option two. Mm. Okay, thank you, Councillor Brown. Can I just add, um, following up from what Councillor Cash said, could either of you, Tony or Sharon, could you tell the committee that because we bring in stalls, yes, they are businesses in in probably in the Sussex region, but we do bring in stalls from outside. Have you ever had any feedback from the existing shops that that upsets them? Um, rather than we go down the route that Councillor Cash is saying that we encourage our own shops to expand rather than bringing in 
outsiders. Could you elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, I can. I've had, um, this would be my fourth year of running Christmas Magic. Um, so I have spoken to a lot of the traders and last year was probably the best year that we have with um, building a relationship because it's been me that's been organizing the event for a couple of years so we do have a few traders who do not want to be involved with Christmas magic whatsoever even offering them a free stall outside their own premises um, it's just not something that they want to be involved with we've also got some of the big um, high street kind of names like your boots and m and co um, and Clintons and things they don't want to be involved with us either um, but then we have worked quite hard with some of the other um, businesses that do want to be involved like Amber's Florist, Crosby's, um, Anique. She, they all want to have a store, they all want to do something to generate that business. So everybody is welcome and if they want to do something they have all asked us um, and run ideas past us and we've worked with them to be able to include everybody. Um, so that they can still have their trade for the day. We also, we try really hard not to um, have people that are doing and selling the same things as other people in the town. Um, we don't have any mobile food units with um, teas and coffees because we know we've got quite a lot of tea and coffee shops in the area. So yeah. they need to thrive during that time of their takeaways and people having lunch with them if, um, on the day. So we do look at everything. And I did refuse a lot of um, stall holders last year, okay. um, just on those grounds. Okay, that's great. And also, could you also, uh, following up again with what counts for cash, that we do reduce as much plastic waste as possible? I'm completely in agreement. I yeah. mean, we see a lot of those um, mini stalls that sell the lighted stuff for the children. They do tend to come out more at bonfire. It's bonfire, yeah. Um, hate those i think they're overpriced and it's all plastic and it ends up in our landfill and yeah. i really hate it is there any way we can make sure feedback into the committee that we we really reduce that down yeah there was a guy last year who wanted to bring a load of that stuff and i said no um okay. we didn't have i didn't see anybody with all that plastic stuff last year um yeah. and we did ask everybody exactly what they were selling on the stalls yeah. Um, and ask them to not bring certain things if they want yeah. to do in the day. Because I like real traditional, what Jean, uh, sorry, what Councillor Cash said, the real traditional yeah. side of Christmas, yes. But you need to buy your I, and gifts, don't I just you? add in to that, just what Sharon was saying, Chair, if that's... Yeah, okay. yes, please, sorry, Tony. Um, I do think last, I do think um, Councillor Cash uh, may be thinking more about the bonfire night because last year we, we we had very little plastic i know sharon and eddie working with her really worked hard to to not have traders um dealing in that and also i do 100 percent get about having local traders um having stalls but some of them just they just don't want to engage and to make it a bit of an event sometimes you do have to bring outside traders in just to have that bit of mix and match something a little bit different so, you know, it's about getting that balance, really. Yeah, okay, thank you. Councillor Cash, did you want to come back? To yeah, um, I just wanted to make two points. I've heard from some of the traders on the high street that they do feel left out of it a little bit. In that, in, am I not, um, oh, you can't hear me. Because made of the lights and things were in Broad Street and they were asked to contribute to lights, which really didn't give the atmosphere of down the high street part of the town. Um, and the other thing is i had a complaint from one of the local charities who said it was so expensive to have a stall that they weren't able to well they were able in the end because somebody kindly gave them part of their stall and this was the sussex uh, wildlife group that worked on on uh, seaford head and they've got their new 50 year book that they wanted to sell and they just couldn't get it they they couldn't make any money and sell something they thought the community would be interested in because the stores were so expensive for them to actually hire and i think that's a shame i think we ought to look at how we give everyone access even if they're a charity who haven't got a lot of money okay thank you. it is a cost for charities Sorry? It is a reduced cost for the charities. Yeah, but, but some, some charities haven't got any income at all. And I think uh, 
and we just need to think around see if we can be, produce something that just helps people um, to be able to take part as well. And I agree with you, Tony. Yes, of course, you can't just do it in. Sometimes you've got to bring other people in just for, to get the life and soul of it. I don't disagree with that. It's, uh, okay. But um, I know it's hard work, Sharon, that you put a great deal into it. And it may well have been different last year, but I wouldn't know because I was at, actually in hospital having an operation on that night. So it probably went very well without me. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Cash. Councillor Walraven and then Councillor Brown. Uh, thank you, Chair. I, I thought last year, the, the Christmas magic on Saturday, I mean, I think we had quite a good mix of stalls and different crafts and uh, charities and, and, you know, I mean, I, but people were saying to me, you know, that it was a good, a good day and, you know, the good mix of uh, different stalls. Um, you know, as I say, there's a lot of crafts and, um, private uh, um, sort of businesses um, who, who, you know, who had a stall and uh, on the whole I thought there was good feedback on it. Okay. Thank you Councillor Warwick. Councillor Brown. Uh, yes, thank you Chair. Um, one of the highlights of that um, evening is the lantern parade for the children. I understand mm. it's difficult to facilitate that in, in a hall or whatever. Is there any chance that we could get the schools to participate and then they could come along at a certain time and we could still have a parade? You know, it, it really goes down well with the kids. They love it and the, the adults like it too. You know, they, you can see them, you know, all waving and being happy. So any chance on that, you think? Um, I think we're going to have to see what's happening with the guidelines that were issued um, in that October, November time, just, well, October time really, so that we can we can see where we're going because I think the guidelines at the moment, I'm not sure we would be able to do something with a lantern parade itself, um, with the congregation of people and the when, then when, once it stops in a certain point, I think there would be too many people in one area really. And I, it's very difficult to, to marshal that lantern parade as it is anyway, let alone with restrictions in it. Um, so I think we may have to wait and see, Councillor Brown. Okay, fine. Well, let's keep our fingers crossed and maybe I'll happen. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, oh, sorry, Councillor uh, Everton. Yes, sorry. Oh, no, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Don't worry. Oh. It's not that important. All right, and Councillor Cash, we'll just end on you. I was just going to say, can we propose then that we go for option B? Yeah, well, yeah, I was just going to come to that. Thank you. Sorry. Yes, so... Yeah, so Sharon, have you got anything, you or Tony, have you got anything else to add before I move to the vote? Tony? No, right. Right. No, 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 thank you. Smashing. Thank you very much. So your recommendation is, now, do you want to take the two together or do I do them set? You want, you're happy, you're all nodding your head, right, okay. So we've got one and two. So number one is note the contents of the report. And number two is to consider the options presented and instruct the projects and facilities team accordingly. So I've got a feeling that we're all very happy with option which we were saying b but it's actually option two that we do do something but it'll be a much more paired back event we hand that back to um the, the team which is sharon and tony you'll be working with the committee so could i please have i will need in this case a proposer and a seconder please so councillor cash has proposed councillor brown is seconder all those in favor of option two that's, that, thank you, and that's carried. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sharon. Thank it you. It's really good to see you. Thank you for coming. Thanks, no Sharon. We, we leave that one with you. <laughs> right, so moving on to agenda item number seven, we've got to review the council's ongoing projects, many of which are on hold due to COVID nineteen pandemic. So, Tony, I don't. I mean, this, again, it's quite self-explanatory. We've got three recommendations. I'll hand over to Tony if he wants to add anything. And then I will hand to the committee for questions. Um, not really. As you say, it is, it is self-explanatory. Um, I suppose one thing to sort of say about recommendation three is, is about recommending the power to um, community services to approve allocation of SIL um, funds. Um, it would only be SIL funds 
um, that uh, can only be used for community projects, projects that the facilities team would be working on. So it's not like we're saying, can we vote to have a load of money out the general reserve or something and the other council money, um, which of course wouldn't be right, but it's just for that SIL money. I just, just wanted to make that absolutely clear. Yeah, yeah. Um, thank you, Chair. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Tony. Well, I'll open it up to the committee. Have you got any questions on this agenda item? No. Oh, Councillor Brown. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, on item three, actually, um, the SEAL funding that we get twice a year from Lewis District Council is meant for infrastructure projects, and that could include the golf club, it could include the view. You know, there's more wide ranging, I think, than just some projects that come under Tony's remit. Um, and I wonder whether um, it's wise to commit all of the SEAL funding, um, you know, back to your committee uh, when there might be other calls on it. Just the point. Okay, thank you, Councillor Brown. Uh, could, could I? Uh, yes, please just do. Add to that, yes. Chair. Um, yes. Talking to LDC, um, it would be quite it would be quite difficult to put that money towards a view or the golf club unless it was something that was community based. So if I don't know, I'm trying to think of something really. I mean, we we couldn't put that money into um, Oh, I don't know, doing up the bar or something like that, or you, you, you know, uh, working on the building. It, it, it's not something that benefits a community, and this is what the SIL budget is all about. It's not, it's not directly like the Section 106 where you could throw it into infrastructure, roads, public buildings, that sort of thing. It is very much for community-based projects. Thank you, Tony. Any other questions from the committee? Councillor Walraven. Going on, going on what Tony's saying, I suppose, it, you know, we wouldn't be able to use the SIL money to, say, build the spike bar, uh, spike, new spike. So mm. really, um, um, I think, uh, you know, I would like to propose that we, you know, take all three um, recommendations, really. Okay. Have we got, before I go to that vote, have we got anybody else to ask questions? No. Nope. So, um, Councillor Walraven has put in a motion that we again take all three recommendations. Uh, can I have a seconder on that, please? Yes, I'll second that. Thank you. And is everybody in favour of taking all three? Yeah, okay. So, we've, we've got the three recommendations. I'll just read those. We've got note the contents of the report regarding the Town Council's project list as at the 30th of July 2020. We've got number two, note that going forwards, officers will present a report to the Community Services Committee prior to starting any projects, setting out the project details, including the funding source, including those projects be funded by CIL money, as exampled with reports 3120, 3320, later on in this agenda. And number three is to recommend to full council that it delegates powers to Community Services Committee to approve the allocation and spend of CIL balances. Please, could I have a proposer and a seconder? So, Councillor Walraven, Councillor Meek, seconded. All those in favour? I think that's passed. Thank you. Okay, agenda item A. To inform members of proposals for medium term repair work to Splash Point, you are recommended to note the contents of the report and your recommendation too is consider recommending that full council allocate up to £10,000 from earmarked reserves 361 CIL receipts to contribute towards repair work at Splash Point. I'll hand over to Tony if Tony's got anything to add before I open it up to the committee. Um, well, I, well, I'm hoping that everybody's had a chance to read the um, discussion paper that was um, that was uh, uh, done for us by Tim Bartlett from uh, LDC, and it, it, it's a really good report. Um, this there is a, a there is not a no cost option for 
um, for splash point. If, if it's left, um, it will have to be managed. It, it can't just be left to the elements. So well, whatever decision we make today, there will be some cost there. We, we just don't know how much. Um, this opportunity we've got now, um, it comes about because LDC, uh, Lewis District Council, do have some funds available, which might not be the case this time next year um, to do the work. Um, we, um, it's, if we need to do it, we need to move quick on it before the winter storms. So we, we need to make that decision. Um, if, it, if we did decide to leave it, um, it would be more expensive next year. Uh, that, that, I think there's little doubt of that. And we may not have the LDC funding. Um, and uh, I suppose one other thing to note that this is a medium term solution. It's, it's, we're not looking 50, 100 years with this. It's impossible to put a, a time on, but estimated sort of 15 years sort of. And that gives us the time to really decide as a town, as a council, what our residents, what we actually want to do with Splash Point. Because to do those works for a long term solution is you, you're looking at the hundreds of thousands as opposed to the tens of thousands. Um, so yes, that's what I have to say on it. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Tony. Has any committee member to speak on this? We've got Councillor Brown. Um, Councillor yes, Morgan, I, I'll have you afterwards. Councillor Brown. I just uh, thank you, Chair. I'd like to just point out to the committee at this stage that we've probably only got thirty-five thousand in reserves at this particular time due to some other event. Um, are we sure that we can? I, I mean, I. I do understand that we need to carry out this work. You know, there's no doubt about that. It is an asset to the town, um, particularly when the, um, when the when the goals are nesting and things like that, you know. And I agree with Tony that if we don't do something, then it will deteriorate even further over the winter and there'll be a bigger collapse perhaps than, uh, from the pathway. Um, you know, but um, I've got to be certain in my own mind that we've, that we've got the 10,000 that we can spend. That's my only concern. Thank you. And not more than, not more than 10,000. Thank you. But may I, may I um, yes, comment on that please, yeah. Chair? Thank you. Um, it, it is a 10,000 contribution and, and that's all we're saying to LDC. So no more. They will be funding the rest of it as will uh, the Environment Agency be doing their bit. Um, the 10,000 wouldn't touch the 35,000 reserve we've got because it would be coming out of SEAL funds, uh, of which we have at the moment about 22,000 pounds. So, it, it, and, and that, as I say, can't be used. We couldn't get that money and put it in our general reserve. It's got to be used on, on community projects. Thank you, Tony. Councillor, okay, I would agree with that, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Councillor Walraven. Yeah, I mean, I think we've, we've got um, uh, to agree to this, to, um, to put it to full council and, and, and we have got the word in up to 10,000. Um, it doesn't seem that long ago that we, you know, we were um, sort of um, Parting with putting the money towards the splash point and, you know, and it's all eroded again. I'm just wondering, is, is there um, any coastal revival fund from the government again this year, the 2020? I know they did it last year, and I'm just wondering if we, you know, either us or LDC can tap into this. I'm sure LDC would have tapped into it if it was an option, and, yeah. and I have a feeling that that sort of fund is for um, sort of breaches in, in flood defence that could cause harm to, to you know to, to other buildings or to other structures wow. whereas you know to be honest about Splash Point it's not actually going to cause any damage to any nearby houses if it's left to go yeah. so yeah. they probably wouldn't consider a project like that. Mm. No, it's, I mean it is a popular um, place and I mean, it's either do you take the decision that we don't 
um, you know, put money to it and you just let it, the sea erode it or, or we, you know, we do try and save it. And as it is such a, you know, a popular place and especially when the uh, kitty wakes, isn't it, the, which um, come each year. So I tend to propose that we um, accept the recommendations one and two. Okay, thank you, Councillor Bottom. Okay. Okay, thank, thank you, Councillor Bottom. Councillor Tash, can I move to you now, please? I think um, John, John Edson and, and James Meek will agree that we had quite a long discussion uh, with Tim about this and on the Environment Agency meeting. And um, it's very clear that they don't feel that they could put funds towards it except to defend the pumping station. I think, Tony, that was what Tim told us, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And that, um, that because there wouldn't be any houses or things that would be um, affected if there was flooding, they would not be able to get the grant or the priority for it would be, not, would be lower because it wouldn't be an infrastructure damage. It would occur if there was more flooding there except the pumping station. So I think it's because they're going to protect the pumping station that they're prepared to put some money in but they wouldn't put any more money in to protect the pumping station. But he did mention, and you mentioned, I think in your report, Tony, the idea of crowdfunding. How did that come into it? Um, this, well, what, what this, if we went for this option, what it would give us is the time to look into those options like crowdfunding. It's almost one of those things where people can, you know, if it's that important to them, they can put their money where their mouth is, if you like. And, and do something that that's what this creates for us and it might be the decision is to let it go and let nature take its course but it's you know it's a it's a wider discussion really and this this really just does buy us that time thank you yes thank you tony uh councillor meek um i i feel we ought to go with this um option and and vote for the uh, ten thousand from the sill however I think we should be very clear <coughs> that you can't fight against nature in this way. You know, you only have to look at the rate at which the cliffs are, are deteriorating and eroding further down the way eastwards uh, to realise that, you know, we, we can't hold this uh, uh, in, in check for much longer. And we're just going to have to accept that um, certain things that we've come to value and love uh, are going to change. Um, uh, and I think um, we shouldn't fool ourselves that we can mitigate against all this. We've got to work with it in some way. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Meek. Okay, now well, I've had a proposal. Proposal. Oh, sorry, Councillor Brown, did you want to add something? Or? Yeah, sorry, uh, just one more thing. Is there any chance of getting money from South Downs National Park? I know it's just outside of it, but, uh, you know, it is, a, it is a beauty spot. Um, it, it is just outside it and the answer is no they have been involved in some of the talks but um but, but no okay all right thank you councillor brown okay so i've had a proposal from councillor walraven that we do take both recommendations together so can i have a seconder on that and are we all in favor show of hands please okay so now back to the the recommendations. I mean, obviously, number one is note the content of the report, and then number two is to consider asking for council for the ten thousand pound to be allocated from the seal to contribute towards repairs towards Splash Point. Please, can I now have a proposal for both those? I've got Councillor Walraven. Can I have a seconder, Councillor Cash, and all those in favour? Please show your hands. Lovely. I think that's carried. Thank you very much. Okay, moving on, we have now agenda item number nine. We have uh, the report to present the water refill station project for consideration. We again have to, as a recommendation, we have to note the contents of the report. And recommendation two is consider recommending that for council allocate approximately three thousand pound from earmarked reserves three six one CIL receipts towards the installation of three water refill stations along Seaford Promenade. Tony, would you like to say anything on this or do I hand over to the committee? I mean, no, it's pretty self-explanatory really, yes, so thank you Chair. Brett will come this evening and speak on that. 
Um, I've also been heavily involved in refill, refill Seaford and New Haven. Um, I'd open up to the committee. Any questions? Councillor Brown. I believe that uh, this money has already been allocated, is that correct? So in fact we're not putting any more funds into it? Not quite, if Tony could explain. <laughs> No, so, so there, there are two types of SIL allocation we can have. We, we can apply for grants from SIL twice a year where we uh, ask uh, for money for specific projects and we were, um, we were uh, uh, successful in getting a grant for this from the SIL grant fund um, to cover half the costs. Um, that was it seems to get SIL money, to get grant money, you have to match the money a lot of times on these projects. So we have said so we said to them, if you give us half the money, we'll match it. Now, it's that match money that I'm asking for, which comes from, I know it says from SIL again, but it's from a different SIL part. It's from the SIL neighbourhood portion part. So we don't, so we only have half of that money allocated to it. It's up to us to provide the other half. <laughs> Anybody hear my dog then? <laughs> <laughs> obviously don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Any, thank you, Tony. Any other questions? Councillor Everton, yes? Oh. Uh, just cracking up. No. No, I think we've lost lost Councillor Everton. Any so any other committee member would like to say anything on this agenda item? No. Well, I would just like to add, and Councillor Brett will agree with me that sadly, due to COVID, we have seen an immense increase. Of the single-use plastic bottle we see so much of it in our litter waste on the seafront which should be recycled so i am completely in support of this because we would hope that by putting in these refill stations that people would actually go out and buy the reusable bottles and there's so many on the market and they're not that expensive i was in the range today and they had a whole host of them all different colors and shapes and sizes and some of them are really really beautiful so I am completely in support of this um, this item um, that we do we do ask for council for the three thousand pounds. So thank you, Councillor Walraven. I'm sorry. So I, so let's go straight to the recommendations, and yep. uh, I propose that we uh, one and two. Thank you very. Have I got a seconder on that? And we're all agreement that we take one and two. Thank you. So now I just need, uh, note the concept the report is pretty straightforward, but I really do need a, a proposal for number two. That's what I mean. I propose um, uh, we take uh, one and two together. Okay, thank you. Um, so, yep. All those, have I got a seconder on that? Councillor Cash, all those in favour? Lovely, that's carried. Thank you very much. Right, agenda item number 10, I have to present details for the committee to consider whether to allow traders to apply for a permit to sell alcohol on the seafront promenade and at the Salts Cafe. We have two recommendations. Number one, note the contents and consider whether to allow any of the businesses to apply for a permit to sell alcohol A on the seafront and B at the Salts Cafe. Number two, recommend that full council adopt the events policy with the amendment detailed in this report at its next ordinary meeting. Now I wanted to talk on this but I will hand over to Tony first and then I'll open it up to the committee. Tony have you got anything to say on this specific report? Um, there's, there's quite a lot in here really so if we if we look at the seafront first it, it's it's really a, a wider discussion to decide um, one whether the council feel uh, they could recommend uh, or approve um, the selling of alcohol on the seafront through a concession and, and also if, if they did if they if they were to go that way 
um, to um, have a look at the three um, concession uh, traders that have approached us, which are in the uh, exempt reports, appendixes, and sort of look at which ones they feel would, would, would suit the location of the seafront, which one they feel would, would work best. Um, so there's that. The Salts Cafe is, 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 is quite different really, because whereas the other ones are, are predominantly selling alcohol with maybe the odd bit of food or whatever, the, the, the Salts Cafe is the opposite, where they're predominantly food, but they would just like to be able to serve alcohol with a meal. So sort of quite similar to you'd have in a National Trust uh, tea shop, whatever, where you could have your meal and have a little glass of wine or a little lager or something like that. But they certainly wouldn't want to set themselves up as a, as a bar, if you like, and people just going in there for, for drinks alone. Um, and um, the other number two, sort of, it, it relates back to um, really the cinema, the drive-in cinema, whereas um, we were toing and froing whether to uh, allow them to uh, have a uh, sale of alcohol. Um, you know, it was pretty unanimous that none of us thought it was a great idea. And it's, it's about just giving the powers to the officers to make those decisions. Uh, as opposed to it having to come to a council meeting because had it had to come to a council meeting uh, for the driving cinema they, they would have been starting this weekend so it just really sort of shortens the pro um, it, it just makes it a quicker process really if we could did have the powers for that so thank you chair thank you Tony right I'm going to open it up to the committee I want to speak on this but I'll open up to the committee first have I got anybody with any questions oh I haven't, I haven't got a question. It's more as an observation that we we considered the uh, the application. I think it was from Harley House that did that stall with the gins, um, which was which was nice. Um, but we wasn't too sure about getting into selling alcohol along the front. Um, so I think I think it's possible that full council should um, pick this one up uh, because you know if we leave it to the officers um, and, and, it, and it goes a bit wrong um, the, the public are going to go over have, have a pop at us so I think that we, we, we should be the ones to make the decisions on that and I think it goes to protect the officers as well um, you know, they can make their recommendations for sure, um, and we can and we can change our mind or not, as the case may be, as a result of their recommendation. But I do honestly think that this one should be a wider, a much wider council to make this decision. This is a real change in the way that we treat our seafront. You know, at the moment, seafood is a you know, is between two, uh, you know, more commercial, as it were, with regard to that sort of thing. Do we want to stay as we are, or are we going to go down the road of um, almost turning it into a, a beachside cafe? I can just envisage, you know, it'd be great, They're like a Spanish chiringuito mm. and stuff like that. What they can, but uh, I don't know so much. I'd rather, uh, I'd rather listen to what a lot of people have got to say on this one okay thank you councillor would you mind if i had a chance oh, yes, to answer sir, that sir, please, chair. Waving afterwards thank you maybe i didn't make myself very clear on that the 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 um delegation to the officers was for um for for an event if you like in an open space to um whether we could grant an alcohol or whether we permit permit sale of alcohol at an event. It wouldn't be on the seafront. It would be something like, um, I don't know, well, it would be something like the drive-in cinema came to us, said, we, we want to do this show, can we sell alcohol? And it would be down to the officers to make that decision, you know, based on health and safety and everything. And also let's not forget, it, it's a double prong thing because if Seaford Town Council did grant them, they've still got to go to Lewis District Council to, to get permission. So, you know, they've got two hurdles to get through. 
Um, I certainly wouldn't suggest that the, um, the officers make the decision about selling alcohol on the seafront because um, totally agree that, that that's a, you know, a wider discussion. Mm. Thank you, Tony. Councillor Walraven and then yes. Councillor Cash. Yeah, um, with regards to the Salts Cafe, um, I'm in favour that they, you know, do apply for a alcohol license because I think it will enhance the business and, um, and make it more profitable. So I'm in favour for that one. Mm -hmm. With the seafront concessions, are we just looking at just one or um, one, you know, one concession, you know, one um, spot on the seafront which would be allowed to have um, a license? Yes, I mean, that's just what one. I would recommend, and unless the councillor said to me, no, we. we you know, we'd like them in two or, or three different locations, but I think, I don't judging think by the length of our seafront and the amount we have on there at the moment, you know, one would be adequate. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I wouldn't be happy more for more than one. Mm. Um, and I suppose, like with the events, see, like we have. Um, like with the Rotary, the Martello Rotary, they have the tavern in the tent and they've got a license so they can come to the Martello fields like we have them for the Armed Forces Day and, and the, and the uh, Motor Fest. So that would be like with the cinema that they would have to apply um, for a license for them to come down would that work in the same way? I, I would think so. I mean, it's historic. That's what they've done for years. And if they, you know, that they, they, as part of their application form, they'd put down, they'd have a, a, a license, uh, uh, whatever, they'd be selling alcohol. And, you know, yeah. we would just agree something like that because yeah. it's yeah. it's worked very well in the past. Yeah, okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cash. Um, when the decision, Tony, was made about the cinema, um, that, that didn't come to, to councillors. Um, it presumably went to um, consultation with Councillor Dunn? Yes. With, is that just a, an in-between um, suggestion that we could make? I, I am concerned that decisions like that could be made without any council representation at all. And you obviously thought it was appropriate to approach uh, Councillor Dunn to help with that decision and I think that's the medium way that I would be prepared to agree with but I do think councillors ought to have some input into these kinds of decisions mm -hmm. because we do get quite a lot of um, questions from our residents and we do feel we need to be involved sometimes in the discussions if they could be contentious so yeah. um, is there a way of writing it so it appears to be with the chair of community services or something like that? Yeah. I can respond on that point. Oh, sorry. Like yes, there. sorry, George. I was just going to say we, we can just change the wording ever so slightly in the policy there and just say that it be done in consultation with the chair of the Community Services Committee. And then it just means that each time we're considering something like that, we will speak with the chair before making a decision. Yeah. The thing is, when, thank you, George, uh, to answer the cash, when Tony um, contacted me regarding speaking about this, it was because there was a little bit of a what do we say? We, we weren't in a rush, but they'd obviously approached Tony on the back of already coming to the, um, the council about the initial driving. Uh, my my first initial thought was, oh well, it's like the tavern in the tavern in the uh, sorry the, the beer in the tent that the Rotary do. You know what's the problem? We've always had that going on down at the Martello. But then Tony pointed out that this is vehicles involved, and we as a council shouldn't really be be promoting drink driving it's not really a good a good position for us as a council to be in so with when Tony sort of put that to me and he'd already done risk assessments with Lewis district and the police it sort of put a different aspect on it and that is when I thought mm, you know maybe this isn't such a good idea because if there was ever an accident in the field when somebody ran someone over by accident not necessarily because they've got drink in them because drink is predominantly down there we could have repercussions. So 
between the two of us and all the risk assessments, we said, we said no. Um, my view on this is I'm completely, I'm in agreement with Councillor Walrave and I'm completely happy for the salts to have a license to sell alcohol within the confines of the salts cafe with their meal. That to me seems very, very um, controlled and, and it, it's, it, it wouldn't be a pub set up, it wouldn't be just going and have takeaways, it would be that you eat in there with a glass of wine or a beer or whatever. I'm not keen or happy with alcohol being sold on the beach from huts or concessions. I, the, the problem I face with our seafront is we have no management at all, nothing, we don't even have lifeguards at the weekend. And I just don't think it's, we've got enough control on our seafront to put this. So I'm, 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 I'm against this. I'm not comfortable with this at all. I don't think we should be having alcohol just on the beach. I'm okay if it's like, um, Eastbourne, because we are between Eastbourne and Brighton, they do again have things like the salts. If they've got a cafe that's specifically selling it with meals, that I can understand. That is I'm fine with. Apart from that, no, I'm not comfortable. But that's my view as, as chair of this committee. May, may I just, chair, may yeah. I just pick up yeah. on a point that, that, you, that you said there? Um, all, um, what, what I will say, I, I totally get what you're saying about people taking alcohol on the beach. All three of the concessions that uh, approached us um, would basically want to sell the alcohol within a controlled area, within a seated area. So it wouldn't be like um, a takeaway thing where you, you grab beers and go down on the beach or whatever. It would all be in a sort of, you know, an outdoor seated area. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Brown. Uh, yes, Chair. Um, Councillor Everton. I'd like to support the Salts Cafe resolution because I think that that's reasonable and it will enhance their business and uh, probably may bring us in some more money in the future, uh, you know, with, uh, with the, um, the charge that we make. Um, on, on the seafront, um, I'd like to remind this, chat, this committee that Council has already rejected once having alcohol on the seafront when uh, yeah. the gin palace or something wanted to set up at the Martello and council rejected it. Mm -hmm. um, I also support what council Edson is saying that this should go to full council and not just be restricted to uh, community services so that the full council can have a say. Um, my, my concerns are first of all it's down at Bonnie Step Parade and immediately opposite Bonnie Step Parade there's a very big town um, you know and the residents wouldn't be very happy about a lot of additional noise and, and um, rowdyism. It also includes uh, are also being increased in litter, and I don't know. I don't know how these organisations expect that they can stop people from buying their drinks and taking them down to the seafront yes, and yes. leave the litter behind. Because that also, I know is in the three um, the three uh, resolutions that have been brought forward. Each one of them wants to sell bar snacks as well, additional litter. Um, there's also a question of pollution and, and noise down on there and like you say uh, most people go down to the seafront in their cars. It's town council now saying that we uh, support people buying booze and then driving home. I don't think that's on. Um, I'd like to rec recommend that we reject this, uh, this resolution. Okay, thank you Councillor Bowen. I've got Councillor Everton. Yeah, I'm, I'm back. The internet hates me. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, I'm, I came in late there, but I agree with what everyone's saying. Last time we voted on this, I was quite vocal about not selling alcohol on the beach. I agree with the salt. It's a venue and it's slightly off of the beach, but we don't have any real policing of our seafront. Brighton uh, has quite a lot of policing of its seafront. One of the reasons for that is they sell alcohol on their seafront, so it, draw, it draws in issues, then draws in policing. Mm. Um, which is something we don't have at the moment and I know that these venues want to have like outdoor seating and it all sounds lovely but the truth is that people when they go down to the beach and drink they take they buy their drinks and they wander off down to other areas if there's no seating they're not going to refuse to sell people drinks if there's not a seat so people will take their drinks and go elsewhere and also it's on the part that's a through fair and you have a lot of families walking up and down it's a very family oriented seafront 
and you know people who have been sitting outside drinking or whatever sometimes conversations or volumes and things like that go on that aren't appropriate for what is a, essentially a family seaside town seafront i'm i'm all for bars and everyone having a good time but i don't think that our seafront is the right place for it and i think that the problems that they have down at brighton they can police we can't police yeah. may i jump in yeah. there on that point of um Tony, yes sorry thank you um what i will say is is with every concession i i I wouldn't expect a takeaway, and I don't think they would do a takeaway service. I mean, if people look at the um, the um, uh, Harley House one, you 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 have an allocated table. You go to your table. You can either book through an app or you queue for the bar. Um, I, I, I want everybody to make a decision on this, but I, I want it to be the right one and not for the wrong reasons. This is. This is a bar area in a controlled area. Um, nobody's looking to go past nine o'clock in the evening. Um, and people are just looking to serve within that, that area. I think that's the real key thing here. Um, with the bar snacks and whatever, we, we haven't agreed that that would be an ongoing discussion. We probably wouldn't allow bar snacks because it sort of uh, encroaches on other concessions down there and takes away their business. Um, so I think, I think it's different to Brighton. I don't, this isn't the sort of thing where you go pick up a drink and walk off. It, it will be in that environment, in that controlled environment. Um, I because I, I wouldn't feel happy if it wasn't. Sorry, Georgia. Oh no, sorry, Tony, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I was just gonna say, Chair, if you're happy, I'm aware that we've got two members of the public here who are actually two of the applicants um looking to hold a concession and i know we've already had public participation but i wondered maybe if the committee or through you would like to invite them maybe to respond to some of the concerns as we've got them here because it might be a nice way to hear you know they may have measures in place to try and address some of the concerns and i think as we've got two of them here it might be a nice gesture just to okay. hear okay i to can't make that decision i won't make that my decision i'll put that in committee out of the committee, we have an Andy Bridge and we have off the wagon Rob Cowan. Are you happy for them to speak at this point? Because we'd have to suspend standing orders for them to do so. So can I have some feedback from the committee, please? Councillor Walraven? Yes, <clears throat> yes, I'll be happy for um, to, to drop uh, some standing orders so that um, two members of the public can uh, give their views. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'm happy for, for Andy and Rob to speak as well. Councillor Edson? Yes, I'm happy. Right, but before I do so, please forgive me, Councillor Meek had his hand up prior to what Georgia said, so can I go to Councillor Meek to ask his question? Because I believe you wanted to speak, Councillor Meek. Uh, yeah, I was, I was just wanting to uh, point out that, that concessions on the beach um, is a completely different thing from licensing at one-off events. Um, it, once you've said to a concession holder, you can have the concession, however long it's for, if it's six months or the year, you then give a precedent that the alcohol will be served on, on any day or, or every weekend or whatever the, the, the terms of the concession were. Whereas you have much more control over the regulation of a one-off event where there might be a beer tent and you say, well, it's just going to happen this one weekend. At mm. least with the drive-in cinema, it was only that one weekend. Admittedly, it was four days on the trot, but it was only that one event and you had control to say, well, that, okay, it didn't work and it's not going to happen again. Once you've granted the concession for a year, that tends to be a different thing. The, the, the concession holder would have to quite be quite in their rights to say well you've given me the concession for the year therefore that's how long it lasts and, and and those are the terms you gave me so we would have no recourse i would imagine uh over that concession period i was just going to give that as a kind of caveat for that um decision okay thank you councillor cash just to, before i go to the two gentlemen um I would have thought if you granted someone a concession, there would be terms to it in which it could be cancelled if, if in some 
way the, the uh, agreement was broken. I don't know, but I presume there'd be something totally within an agreement with a concessionaire that if they, they didn't meet the terms of the agreement, that that could be cancelled. Yeah, there would be, and it, and it might be something we say, right, we, we, we're going to give it a go for, for a month and, and see how it goes and, and monitor it. Um, so yeah, so we, we don't necessarily have to say six months or a year, we can say, let, let's give it a go. And as you say, some strict terms and conditions, if we see they're not being kept to, then it just stops. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Tony. Okay, now I've all, as the committee of now, we, we've all in agreement to suspend standing orders. Um, as councillor, sorry, sorry, as off the wagon, Rob Cowan was here first this evening, I will move to you. So um, if you'd like to say something. Yeah, can you hear me okay? Yes. Um, yeah, thank you for letting me speak. I mean, I, I, I obviously do understand any concerns relating to um, licensing in public spaces, whether it's a beach, a park, a woodland. Um, but I think ultimately it is entirely down to the way a, a, a bar is managed, uh, the expertise of the organisation or the, or the people or the team that run it. And as you have just said, uh, the rules and the, uh, the guidelines the stipulated from the outset. When, when I initially approached the council about this, which was actually 18 months ago or so, um, it was always with the idea that it would come with some kind of trial period of operation to, to give somebody, whether it's me or someone else, uh, the opportunity to demonstrate how well it can be run and for any issues that might crop up unexpectedly be addressed from both sides of the arrangement. So it, was, it, it, it is something that I had always, always assumed that would be the case. In terms of comparisons to East, Eastbourne and Brighton, I think they're a little bit erroneous in as much as it clearly is a very different kettle of fish. With, you know, you don't have any bars on the seafront at the moment. And I have to say, my my start point from this isn't from a, someone who's got a bar looking for somewhere to set it up. It's as a, as a Seaford Beach user regularly, I'm here now, I'm on the beach right now, um, and someone who frequently has conversations with residents and visitors and the subject of, the, of a bar or somewhere to get a drink always comes up. And we aren't talking about a full-on Brighton Oh, no. We're talking about where people can take a seat, have a. Oh dear. Mm. Not much going on down the beach. I know. Sorry, Rob. Are you? Have we have we lost Rob altogether by the by the looks of it? Yeah. Maybe. Perhaps Andy will have a better chance to burn. No. Oh. <clears throat> Otherwise, I'll move to the next resident. I'll ne Andy Bridge, I'll move to you because until Rob comes back, we don't know if he's frozen for good or we don't know. So, can I move to you, Andy, for you to speak as well? Could you introduce? Uh, oh, no, hang on. No, yeah. we've lost Rob, right. Sorry, um, Andy, can you say who you're from, what organisation you're from? Hello, my name's Andy Bridge. I'm from Abyss Brewing and we started brewing under the Pelham Arms in Lewis 12 years ago. Um, so we have 12 years exemplary trading there as, as licensees. Um, we love Seaford and we're quite well known in Seaford because we have a strong uh, relationship with the steamworks at the railway station. Um, and part of the reason we're applying for Seaford. Um, to, to sell some of our beer that we make, it's two of us who run the brewery, it's a microbrewery, um, is the downturn in sales during COVID-19. So we're looking to maintain our business. And to answer some of your, you know, your questions, which are very valid, um, I would say that our, our beer is kind of premium kind of beer product. So it only attracts a certain 
type of drinker generally someone our beers are generally sucked and appreciated as opposed to you know someone sessioning you know 12 pints and then falling over you know they're very much a, a premium beer product so they don't tend to attract people who want to drink too much um the pricing reflects that as well um we'd welcome a trial period um for a month say um we don't want to put anyone's noses out we we love seaford seafront um we could entertain the idea of uh, security if that was you know a, a thing um, we'd be happy to have a a dedicated area with a certain amount of benches agreed and i think to answer the litter question we'd suggest having a a refundable glass so you it's not a glass it's a plastic container like a beaker but you pay a deposit on that so you in order to get the money back um you have to return it when you finish drinking um yeah yeah if you have any questions i, I welcome them okay thank you councillor Everton, have you got a question for andy yeah so how how many people are you hoping to seat um at the at your you know if you had a concession how many people you're hoping to seat and and if you uh, were to if all of your seats were full and and uh, more customers turned up would you be refusing to serve them alcohol because they can't actually get a seat in your marked out area i think if that's you know what's required if that's the right thing to do then then we should agree that i don't have any problem with that um in terms of the amount of um seats i haven't it'd be good to actually discuss the space and try and mark it out with someone to try and work out the best the right amount you know for the space because it's very much the context of the space but um I'm very happy to have limited numbers if i may jump in chair yes please do um i think uh, we we talked about terms and conditions um that would be one of the things in the terms and conditions that you know when, when, once your seating's full that's it no no more sales okay thank you anybody else would like to ask andy any questions yes councillor meek um you, you you say andy that you have a very good relationship with steamworks um and probably supply them with with beer i'm i'm uh, uh, it's a favourite haunt of mine. I think they're a great little pub, which is actually a proper pub. Um, but don't you think that, I mean, I think Steamworks has been struggling as well um, by bringing another alcohol outlet into a town which already has, I think, 12 pubs. Um, I grant you they're not on the beach and we used to have the beach coma. But um, surely, in effect, what you're going to be doing by default is taking business away from some of the pubs that themselves have been struggling within the town and are our own uh, in-house, if you like, traders within the town. And we feel, I think a lot of councillors feel, we really need to be supporting our own uh, traders who have been trying to survive as well. Okay, thank you, Councillor Meek. Um, right, any, any other questions from any councillors? No. So, oh, Councillor Everton, sorry, and then Councillor Edson. Yeah, sorry, I do just want to make a comment. I mean, I do understand, and these are these are two businessmen that that you know want to do this on the beach. But what I'm concerned about is I know that they're they're talking about terms and conditions and sticking strictly to them, and I you know agree that they they you know that's something that they would do with. But I think once you have people sitting outside, groups of people sitting outside on the beach consuming alcohol even though it's in a sanctioned area and we've agreed to it it does encourage people to come and bring alcohol and sit out on the beach which isn't really something that we have you know in their own groups now which isn't really something that we have or that we condone really and and you know if we have any sort of young people or whatever that sit in groups drink they tend to get chased off um so i just i just worry about it setting a a visible trend that um for something that we've uh, for the most part avoided and, and have voted against previously 
Okay, thank you, Councillor Everton. Councillor Edson, you had your hand yes, up. Yes, I was just going to ask uh, Rob, because he was rudely interrupted. Yes. Yes. There, so but, yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah, you, go ahead. No, I don't. It's not a question. It's just that oh. you. you, you oh, sorry. Yes, I do apologise. Yeah, I waited. Please, I waited you. patiently. My internet behaved right up till I was mid flow, and then it, uh, and then it cut me off. So I do apologise for that. All right. Have you got anything? Sorry, uh, Rob. Have you got anything just to add to finish off what you were saying? I can't quite remember. I got apart from pointing out that yeah, it, it, it is very much. My, my own beach if you like and, and I'm, I'm viewing a need and I happen to be a bar owner that can fulfill that need in what I regard as a, a very professional um, uh, way. I'm, I'm a bricks and mortar pub landlord myself and in response to um, uh, Councillor Meek, um, yes I appreciate the, the, the local pubs are or are not struggling, probably are, um, but I have, I, I got rid of, I sold my pub in Kent because of the, 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 uh, the difficulty in running a high street pub uh, to find a market of alfresco bars. Uh, and that's what I'm trying to do now. I, I don't think it's going to directly still trade from them, to be perfectly honest, because the people down here that I've seen tonight on this beautiful evening down here, by the way, um, would I know not go into town for a drink anyway, but they would come and get a, a beer from me or a gin and tonic from Andy if we were offering a well controlled environment down here. The customers I would be after aren't the youngsters anyway, and the way my bar is always set up at any event I go to doesn't attract them because they can see from the outset that that's not what I'm all about, and I'm sure Andy's is the same. Thank you. Um, any other councillor got any questions for Rob or Andy? Councillor Cash. Oh, you're, you're muted, Councillor Cash. Yeah. Uh, question for Tony again. Um, are areas of C4 still alcohol free zones, Tony? It was something we used to have, but I don't know if I'm very old fashioned and they still they don't exist anymore. Honest answer is I don't know. So probably no then. I'm probably, probably going no. back 25 years, aren't I? Uh, and the second question was, it's, it's not simple for us, is it? Because we've got three businesses here, here who are looking for concessions. And I presume most people would agree that, that we wouldn't, if we look at all three, would we, have to, we would have to choose, would we not? Well, I think, I think if, if the councillors are happy to maybe make the decision about whether to allow an alcohol concession on the seafront and then maybe delegate the actual decision of who to go with to the officers and maybe the chair uh, of uh, community services. Okay, thank you. Right, I've got um, Andy's had his hand up and then Councillor Walrave and I'll come to you. Andy, did you want to just add, this is the last thing to add? Yeah, just a small point, uh, just to be clear, we're only looking to sell our produce, so beer that we brew ourselves, um, and that, that's it really. Okay, thank you. Thank and you. Little Raven? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, Tony, whereabouts do, are, are you proposing to have this concession? Um, a long bonding step promenade, pretty much where the Salty Seahorse yeah. Yeah. Uh, was. See, I'm, I'm personally I'm in favour of having a bar, and that is where I would, you know, would be happy for one to be, um, because it will would be in a controlled area, and I think because we're over halfway through the summer season, it'd be a good time to to give it a trial and if it doesn't work it doesn't work and if we had any problems I mean we've got people who go into Morrison's buy a whole load of beer or wine or whatever go down on the beach and and which is happening now um, so but the to have a, um, a, a licensed bar on, on the seafront on the Bonnish Stead Parade um, it would be controlled 
which is which it isn't now. So uh, you know, I just I I feel to give it a chance, and, and uh, as I say, um, we've tried it, and if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And I just feel we've got to give it a go. Right, thank you, Councillor yeah. Wall. I've got sorry, I've got Councillor Meek, and I think Councillor Cash also had a hand up. But Councillor Meek, if you've got something, because I want to bring this sort of to a close. But Councillor yeah. Meek. Okay. Sorry, I, very briefly, I just wanted to say that we uh, historically we did make a vote on this um, last summer, I believe, and yes. um, I think it was a pretty decisive no to to that, and that's why I would support uh, Councillor Edson in his suggestion that it should be a, a full council decision, not our decision, because I think that some other councillors might be very uh, annoyed that they don't get a say on that, and I don't think we should we should. Ha in view of that historical decision, I don't think we should take this decision without their say so. Okay, thank you, Councillor. Council uh, Chair, sorry, Chair, may I add a, a comment? Yeah, on that, sorry. please. Um, if you, when it was thrown out at the meeting last year, and if you look at the minutes, the main reason it was thrown out was the lack of information that was given with the uh, submission. It wasn't necessarily about not having alcohol on the seafront. It's just that there was, you know, it was a, a side of A4, just, just saying about, um, you, you know, about the, about the uh, concession and, and nothing much else. So there, there was that factor in it. And if you look back at the minutes, that, that's what it says. Right, thank you, Tony. Councillor Cash and then Councillor Brown. I think I've moved a little bit on this. Uh, I came in thinking that I would be totally against it. I'm... I am in favour of having um, a licence for the cafe. I think that's appropriate. And I think I would be in favour of giving a trial concession to one of the concessions and leaving it with officers to decide how they would manage that. Um, I, I don't see how we can lose a great deal by doing that. And if Tony is assuring us that conditions would be put in place, that if things didn't work out appropriately, that it could be cancelled immediately. So I think uh, I have changed my mind a bit about it, really. OK, thank you. Councillor Brown, I'll end on you, because I want to ask a question of um, Andy and Rob. So, Councillor Brown? Uh, yes, um, Chair. Um, can you reinstate standing orders so that I can make a recommendation? Yeah, absolutely. Can I just ask one question before I do, because I want to reinstate standing orders. I just want to ask one question of, of both Andy and rob um when you go in a pub now if you look under age you're asked to produce your id the beach front is very very different will you be expected to be asking for um id from 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 people coming to ask for alcohol so you make sure that they have actually got they can buy alcohol that we're not as a council got young people under age drinking on our seafront thank you rob? um can i ask that can i ask that first yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I as I say, I'm a uh, a seasoned bricks and mortar pub landlord, and I was famous on my high street in Tenton and Kent for an absolute zero tolerance to any sniff of underage drinking and any antisocial behaviour whatsoever. Um, and yes, we will be operating a very strict uh, ID policy on the beach. And I don't have my ID on me because I'm in a bikini. It's no excuse. It, it it doesn't work like that. So yes, we will be. All right. Thank you, Rob. Andy, to, to um, well, yeah, try that one then. <laughs> um, Sorry. As as licensees, um, we're at risk. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Yes. We can yeah, hear yeah. you. Yes. Right. As license as personal license holders, uh, we're at risk of losing our licenses if we don't operate that that policy and ask for ID. So it's it's very much in our interest as well to, to do that. And that's something we're very used to doing. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Andy. I'm now going to reinstate standing orders. This is now back over to the committee. And as Mark had his hand, Councillor Brown had his hand up, Councillor Brown, I hand over to you because you did actually put a proposal in before we went to uh, questions and answers. Yes, I'd, I'd like to make an amendment to this um, recommendation. Uh, first of all, that we do uh, that we go back to council and approve the Salt Cafe part of the recommendation. And yeah. secondly, that we take this to the full council so that everybody in council can have a say 
uh, on the matter. I think Councillor Meek's quite right in saying that, that all councillors should have a say on this matter. Okay, all right then. So, George, have you got the wording of this proposal? Because this has to be voted on. I will need a seconder for this. So, the proposal from what I'm taking from Councillor Brown is that we do approve the licence for the Salts Cafe and that we take this, we delegate this back to full, as a committee, we delegate it back to full council for, full, for the next full council or the one that's appropriate to make a full decision on this. Uh, George, is that correct? Have you understood the, the wording of the proposal? Yeah, I mean, I've, that makes sense. I understand that. But the other option, of course, is that the committee could recommend a decision to full council to consider that it, it's entirely up to the committee what it wants to do. So it can either kind of put the, put the whole consideration to full council or it can make a recommendation. And I don't know. Councillor Brown, have you got anything to add to that? That's your proposal altogether, really, isn't it? I have, no, I have no objections to that. If, um, if, the, if this committee makes a decision now that we refer it back to full council for ratification. Okay. Right, so, well, sorry, Councillor Cash. Uh, are we saying that tonight we will make a decision about the Salts Cafe, but not about the concessions? Yes. Right, thank you. Yes. Anyone? Has anybody else got any other? Because I will need a seconder for Councillor Brown's proposal. I've got Councillor Meek as a seconder. I now need to show of hands, a very clear show of hands, who's, who's in favour of Councillor Brown's proposal. Can I just, sorry, can I just have the sorry. wording of the proposal again? Yes, certainly, Georgia. Okay, so it would be to approve um, permission being given to the Salts Cafe um, license holder to apply for permission to sell alcohol and then it would be to pass the decision back to full council on whether or not to right. give permission yeah. to the concession holders to apply for permission. Is everybody clear on that? Right, so I've had a seconder and a proposal. Sorry, Councillor Raven. Well, that is really two proposals, isn't it? Because one, one is for the Salts Cafe and one is for the... Yeah, so really we need two votes on that, don't we? Okay, right, so we're, all right, then we'll split them. So as they've come from both Council Brown, right, well, the first proposal is that we do approve, as a committee, the SALTS licence for them to sell alcohol. Can I now have a proposal and seconder for that? Councillor Cash and Councillor Walraven, that's great. All those in favour of awarding the SALTS the licence to sell alcohol? Have we got... Okay, so that's carried. May I ask a question on that, please? Yes, Chair? sorry. Um, yes. So you're you're recommending it, but it's it's we're saying it's council, full council that needs to make the decision to to approve it, or are we saying the committee is actually approving it as as is probably well within their powers to do? Yeah, no, the the committee has just now voted to approve completely that the source. Right the license to sell alcohol it's the second proposal regarding the other concessions yeah. lovely thank you thank you tony so the second proposal is that we this is delegated for a decision for the uh, alcohol on the seafront back to full council this is a proposal from councillor brown i now need a seconder for this proposal councillor Everton, thank you and I will need a clear show of hands as to whether this is yes or, or no. So, all those in favour? That's one, two, three, four, five. Okay, that's five. Can you see that, Georgia? Yep. All those against? That's one against. And any absent abstentions? Oh, hang on. Jean's saying something. Councillor Cash, what's... You're, you're muted. What's Councillor Cash? I've abstained. You have abstained. So we've got five four, one against and one abstention. Is that correct, Georgia? Okay, so that's carried to go back to full council. Okay, thank you very much. If I could just confirm, Chair, then we've got a full yep. council meeting on the 20th of August. 
Um, so I guess the intention would be then to look to take that to council at that meeting. Yes, that would be that. Be, yes, that would be good. <laughs> The sooner the better. Oh, actually, we've not finished this item because we've still got recommendation two, which is to adopt the events policy with the amendments detailed in this report for the next ordinary meeting. Is that a next full council meeting, Georgia? Yes. Yeah. So, have I got any questions on that, Councillor Cash? We did. I did ask if um, Georgia could reword that to mm -hmm. add in that it should be in consultation with the head of community services rather than just to the officers. And I wonder if we could, uh, people would approve of change of wording there, please. Yep. Yes. That's a, is that a proposal? Yes. Okay. So I'll second that. Are we in favour of adding that in? Yes. Show of hands. Right. Okay. Thank you, Georgia. Can you add that in? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay, because I'm pleased to that Tony's clarified on that, but it's just about events because I didn't really want the committee to be completely overruled or not have any say on just alcohol in general, that it is alcohol sold at events, but in um, a consultation with the Chair of Community Services. Lovely. Okay, thank you. So the, that is the uh, recommendation number two. Um, which we will be uh, asked to adopt with the amendment to to the the, the, the the previous amendment. So can I have a proposer and a seconder, please? Oh, I've got a proposal, which is Councillor Cash. Can I have a seconder, please? Can I ask what we're voting on at the moment? Yes, sorry. It's recommendation two that we recommend that full council adopt the events policy with the amendments that are detailed now, but with the further amendment that it be in consultation with the chair rather than just the officers, detailed in this report at its next full council meeting. Okay, and we're quite clear that's the one day event. Yes. Okay, yep, fine, I'll check in that. Okay, thank you. So I've got Councillor Cash, the proposer. Sorry, Tony. Um, sorry, can, can I just say, we're saying for an event, it might not be a one day event, it might be a, a weekend event. Um, I think if you think it's about something like um, motor fair, that goes on over a couple of days. So I wouldn't necessarily say a one day event. That's but right. certainly a, a, an, an event as opposed to a granting a, a six month concession. Thing. Okay, okay. Councillor Brown. We amend that to short term event. Okay. Do, do, do you want to be a bit more specific on that? To, you know, say so many days? The short term could mean sort of anything, really. Well, you're going to have no longer than two days or what? <laughs> could, could, could we say three days and that sort of covers us for a bank holiday weekend then? <laughs> That's the brown. <laughs> Just a suggestion. I, I think it's quite in order for this short term event. So, you know, I don't see why they need to start putting days into it because, you know, one day, two days, three days, it could go four days. You know, short term event, there you go, short term. I don't think we need more than that. <laughs> Councillor Edson, did you want to add anything? I just thought that we could change the, the amendment. So, an amendment to the amendment. <laughs> yes. So just change the word in to just events. I mean, it's an event. Whether it's one day or two day, it makes no difference. It, it, it's yeah. an event. It's know? an event, yeah, rather than just a singular uh, thing on the beach, it, it, yes. It, it's like how long's a piece of string, isn't it? Um, so where the applicant is looking to seek permission for alcohol sales, at events. Did we put that, make it that way? No? Oh, sorry, yeah. Chair, through you, on the um, amended policy, so the first sentence there is where the applicant is looking to seek permission for alcohol sales at an event. So yeah, I right. think kind of that makes it quite clear that this is just regarding event bookings that we're receiving. Yeah, yeah. we'd love yeah. to do it. Yeah. 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 So back yes. to what Mark was saying, yeah. Mm. Right, so where do we go with this? Councillor Brown. <laughs> right, I think um, as George 
put it in perspective, the application to seek permission for alcohol sales at an event. That's quite clear. Okay. An yes. event, okay? One day, two uh, days. Mm, yes, okay. An right, event. So got, yes, okay, so the only amendment to the amendment, which is what we've had a proposal, is that it is in consultation with Share of Community Services. So I've had a proposal. Have I had a seconder? I can't remember. Yeah, I think I proposed it, didn't uh, I? Oh, you proposed it. Sorry, and Councillor Cash seconded it. Oh, Councillor Cash, you're muted. No, so I just said I they... proposed it and Councillor Brown seconded it, but I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> All right, whichever way around it. Whichever way it is. Yeah, because you did the amendment to the amendment. Yes, okay. We're all, all in this together. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favour, please raise your hands. Okay, yep, lovely. Okay, that's carried. Right. That brings us to the final agenda on the item. We close the meeting at, I haven't got my watch, at 21.17. Thank you, Councillor Cash. <laughs>